Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another Talkie Tuesday. I'm Dory Patrick. I am a mixed media artist. I work in my home studio here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I try to check in now and again to let you guys kind of know what's up and um, answer questions or talk about different fun topics that things that are happening, all that kind of jazz. So welcome back um, and welcome if you are new here. Um, it is a beautiful sunny day here. This is like crazy, crazy February weather. We don't have weather like this here in Iowa in February. It's like sunny and I think it's going to be a high in the 50s. Um, I'm about to go run a couple errands. I need a couple of art supplies and I'm gonna go without my coat on. I know, crazy, but here we are. So this is a different um, corner of my studio. I don't think that you see it very often. I, um, and you guys have heard me chirp about this a million times. I love the light in here but it makes it really hard to film. <laughs> so I'm always trying out new angles to see um, if I can make it work. But so this is the front part, front front left corner of my studio. Um, my TV is up here um, and these are storage cabinets where I just have um, all kinds of stuff like my fabrics. Uh, my fabric stash, my fabric scraps. Um, I keep some sculpture items in some of these little these little um, storage totes. Good stuff. And uh, yeah, and so behind me is um, down below. You can't really see it in this shot, but it's kind of a side table that I use for stuff in progress. And I have a lot <laughs> in progress. This place is actually kind of a hot mess. I need to um, get after it. I'm, As you have heard, I am um, prepping for a solo show. Um, it's called Crazy Wonderful. Um, and it's actually gonna go up at the end of this month and it will be um, hanging for the months of March and April. Um, and this is a, a group of paintings um, and items entirely on paper. So I'm having a lot of fun playing on paper, manipulating paper. Um, and so now I am kind of finalizing my decisions on what pieces will actually go into, what will hang in the show. And, um, you know, you, and all the admin stuff that you have to do with that, you know, naming everything and listing prices and blah, blah, blah. But um, I'm pretty excited. I have been feeling like I wasn't making enough progress on this show, but I am actually looking at what I've got done and I'm feeling a lot better about it. Cause you know, paper, you can stack a lot of paper and it takes up very little room. So when you're doing works on paper, sometimes it doesn't feel like they pile up like canvases do or or any other medium really for that matter. Um, so I was actually a little concerned, but I think I'm feeling a little better about it. This week is all about finishing touches on the stuff I have and hopefully accomplishing a couple of 3D pieces. I don't know about this whole sculpture thing, we'll see. I sculpted with clay, I've sculpted with plaster, Got to try it with paper, I guess. I mean, maybe. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it'll be a disaster. I don't know. But I think um, I think it's going to be really fun to try. So I'm going to get right into the topic at hand today. Today I'm going to talk about my February daily project. I, if you have been following me on Facebook or Instagram, you already know this. I have given myself the daily challenge of working a little bit every day on a painted jean jacket. 
and I've been sharing the photos as I go along and you guys have just been so sweet and so kind and um, it seems like some of you all are really excited to see what happens next on this jacket. So I thought I would and and with that a lot of questions are coming up um, and so I'm going to address the most frequently asked questions about this jean jacket and about my process so that if you feel like you want to dive into something like this you totally can um let me just show you the jacket really quick in case you haven't seen it so this is a um duster style that i picked up at target several months ago um let me see if there's a the name brand is Future Collective. So if you feel like looking it up on their website, um, it's a long duster style. So, which of course means lots more work, but I'm having a ball with this. So first of all, um, actually, I wanna backtrack a little bit. One of the questions that I have been receiving a lot of is, what's the deal with this daily challenge thing? So I'm going to tell you, um, I kind of have a, a running history of giving myself a daily challenge in February. So in years past, I have done things like um, paint a little postcard every day for every day in February. Or um, there was one year I did a flower painting every day in the month of February. Some big, some small, and then I release them all at the end of the month. Um, why February? I don't know exactly, probably because it's just the beginning of my creative season and it's something to kind of, you know, sweep the cobwebs away, if you will. Um, and I think giving yourself a daily challenge and also making it public <laughs> kind of helps you to hold yourself accountable to getting a body of work done. Um, it has been just always fun for me. Um, and February, it's a pretty fun month for me because it's the month of my birthday and we love Valentine's Day and all that. But February can sometimes be really long and dreary even though it's the shortest month of the year. But um, this has also kind of helped, something like this helps me get through those doldrums of winter when I have something to focus on. Um, so I guess that's why, why a daily challenge? Why February? Um, you know, it doesn't have to be February if that's not a good month for you. It can be any time of year and you could certainly go longer. I have already come to terms, I already knew when I started this project, this is not going to get done in the month of February. But I have had this coat for months, folded up and uh, just, you know, waiting for me to start it. And I would always look at it and it always felt kind of daunting, really. Um, so by just doing a little bit each day and sharing it with you all, that just has given me the little push I needed, the little nudge to just get going on this. So um, I'll show you some of the highlights that I've gotten done so far. This is the back. And um, this probably, this took, um, because I'm working on so many other things, this is this project is being squeezed in around other stuff and i we actually had um my husband had surgery last week and so there was a day that i just totally missed work because i needed to be there for him but i have touched this jacket so far every day in february sometimes a lot some days there's a lot more that gets done other days it's like here i did a polka dot i did some polka dots and that's it <laughs> But collectively so far, I'm really happy with what I've gotten done. Um, I did a peaking sun on the back, which I am loving. I'm still making decisions on what to do here on the back. I have some ideas. I'm not going to 
share them yet because I'm just not sure what I want to do yet. But um, I've got one sleeve that's, hopefully you can see that. One sleeve is well on its way. I did the Sacred Heart up here on the on the bicep and then just some some cute, let's see if I can get this closer. Um, little bees and little patterns. So this sleeve is almost done. And this is probably a culmination of three or four days of little bits of work. Um, I've got the plackets done in the front. So I just did like a little checkerboard on the button placket. So there's the button and then the button hole placket, which is really fun. And I did both cuffs. So I, this arm, I haven't started yet, but I've got the cuff done. Oh, and I did the patch pockets. And so far, this might be my favorite part of, of the coat. So there's one patch pocket. This is the right side. Let me see if I can, if you can see that. My floor is kind of squeaky, so hopefully that's not too loud. And then I did the other patch pocket on the left side. I love a hand motif, a hand with a heart. I feel like that is just such a great symbol, and it was just so easy to do that there on the patch pocket. So that's all I have done so far. <laughs> There's a lot more to go. Um, and I'm trying to be thoughtful about what I put where. And if I feel stuck, I find myself just kind of doing some little doodles and patterns um, here and there. And then when I decide on a motif, then I can go for it. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm thinking this is just going to be, it's going to be a whole lot of look, you guys. I mean, this is not a, going to be a subtle garment, <laughs> but it's going to be so fun to wear, especially to art shows. I think like my spring art shows where I still need that little layer for the cool weather, it's going to be really fun. It's just going to be fun to wear, period, to parties, to whatever. So this is my February daily challenge. And I have gotten a lot of questions from you guys about this. And so I'm going to go over my f most frequently asked questions. And I'm sorry, I'm looking off to the side because I have notes that I, so I don't forget anything. But one of the most common questions is, uh, how do you prep the garment for painting. So, um, and I am only speaking about denim. Um, I won't go into all the particulars of painting all the fabrics. We're talking about jean jackets or jeans or overalls, whatever. Denim is what we're talking about. Um, you need to wash your garment and dry it. Garments, when they come straight out, straight from the store, straight from the factory, they have something called sizing in the fabric. And it's basically chemicals that give it that oomph and that body. Sometimes it's a residue from the processing of that particular uh, piece. And you want to get that stuff out. I personally cannot... Um, even wear anything right off the rack from stores. I always have to wash everything because I have, <laughs> I have this weird sensitive skin um, and I can break out into a rash if I don't wash something first. So wash and dry your garment. So you'll wanna keep in mind your sizing, of course, the size that you want, if there's going to be any shrinkage for your item for putting by putting it in the dryer, you want to keep that in mind when you choose the item that you want to paint. So um, the other question I got a lot was what kind of paints do I use? Here is what I'm using. I am using my assorted acrylic paints that I already have in my studio. You name it, craft paints, art quality paints. 
I am using uh, golden fluids. I'm using some Liquitex. I'm using some of my Nova Color paints. I'm using cheap craft paint. I'm going by whatever colors I want to use, um, mixed with a little bit of white because that's kind. I kind of wanted my colors to be somewhat opaque. And I'm using textile medium mixed with my paint. And I, it's just out of reach. Let me grab it and I'll show you the kind that I'm using. It is, so textile medium is what you mix with your acrylic paint on your palette or on your plate to make that paint be permanent on your fabric. Now, all of you who paint, <laughs> already know that acrylic paint is uh, pretty permanent on your clothes. Uh, anyway, so you could probably be, do just fine just painting with acrylic paint onto your clothing. And it's permanent. I mean, I've got all the stains to prove it. I wash these babies over and over again. It doesn't come out. But here's the deal with the textile medium. It really sets it into the fabric and makes it permanent and it also helps keep the body of the garment um uh softer it's not gonna like i think if you just took a jacket and started painting it with house paint or acrylic paint you're gonna have like a pretty stiff <laughs> stiff as a board garment the textile medium not only helps it be permanent and washable it helps it keep it it helps to keep it soft soft and not so rough now I will say some of this jacket where I have applied the paint kind of thickly it's you know you can tell it's painted you can feel it but that doesn't bother me I don't care I'm going to carry on anyway so here's the textile medium I have been using on this whole on this project and I will put a link to some um, in the show notes so that you can find it this is the Ceramicote Delta textile medium this is an eight fluid ounce bottle I don't even remember how much this is I've had this for so long and <laughs> so I'll see if I can find some links to share with you if you want to get your own bottle so uh, the directions on this bottle say a two to one ratio. So two parts paint, one part textile medium. I don't measure. I just blob some paint on my palette and I squirt this in there and I mix it. It's not, you don't need it to be exact science to work. Now this particular medium also says that when you are done, you let it rest for seven days just let it sit, let it cure, and then you will lightly press it with a hot iron, most likely with a piece of fabric over it because you don't want to scorch your painting, but the heat will set this medium. Now, that being said, not all textile mediums are the same. So this is not the only textile medium on the market. There are many others. Golden makes one. Um, there are several brands out there that are all escaping my brain at the moment, but they all have different directions. So whatever medium you decide to go with, read the directions and follow them to somewhat of somewhat carefully. I think with the mixing of the paint, you don't have to be so exact, but I think as far as setting it for permanency, you'll want to follow the directions for that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, and so I think I just started this bottle new, and I've already used about half of it. One thing I have found is there is a tendency to squirt out too much paint, and I have done that. I have squirted out way too much, and um, the thing in this studio, though, is nothing goes to waste. So if I have extra paint, I pull out some old paper or art journal and slap that paint onto something so it's not wasted. But it will be important to just kind of go little bits at a time because this will extend your paint 
and make it feel like you have a lot more than you need. Um, one of the other questions I got a lot was, how many coats are you doing? Um, that is a personal preference. So some of this jacket is simply one coat of whatever paint I was using. Some of these are two coats. It depends on the paint and it depends on the look that you want. I wanted bold and bright and vibrant. So most of this is two coats um, with the exception of some of the heavier paints, like some of my, uh, I think it was the Liquitex Basics. There just are certain paints that will just give you what you want on that first coat. And that's great because it saves time. Um, so that is personal preference, but a lot of this, a lot of this is two coats, I think, um, because I really wanted it to be solid. So, um, and that's up to you to decide on your garment. Um, a couple of things about the, 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 the painting of an item like this is a little awkward, right? So it's, um, it's, you know, not a flat canvas that you can just prop up on an easel and, and get going on. You're thinking about, you know, a three dimensional object. Um, and so you may have to do this in phases. Um, for instance, the sleeve that I have almost done here. Um, I started off with the sleeve with this lying flat on the table and I did that sacred heart in one go. But when I wanted to add things around this, around this curve, you know, you don't want to be laying wet paint on top of what you've just worked on. So you kind of have to do it in phases. I always have a hair dryer handy so I can, um, you know, blow dry a section really quick. You don't want to get too close because you don't want to burn your paint. Just stay back, give it a little blow, a blow with the, um, uh, hair dryer and then you can just kind of churn it and keep working. I have also found with the shoulder and with the sleeve it's a lot easier to stuff it with something so that you have just uh, kind of like having a little body in there <laughs> just is a little easier to work on. It doesn't give and, and move around on you especially when you're trying to get like little details in there. So, um, I think, let me double check my list. Um, oh yes. And the final thing is you want to be mindful of the, of fabric can bleed through. I mean, it's just like paper, you know, you get a strong Sharpie marker and you draw on regular copy paper, it'll bleed through. So paint, especially if it's a fluid or a really wet paint, um, you want to have something underneath the surface that you're working on. So when I did the sleeve and it was packed, I packed this with old paint rags. Um, it didn't matter if it bled through cause it would just bleed onto, um, a towel. And actually let me look and see if it did. And it doesn't look like I had too much bleed through. I think with a thick denim, you're doing all right, but I would just err on the side of caution place cardboard under the surface or something to just be sure, um, you know, if, if it's something really detailed that you are, you want to preserve, you'll want to do that. So, um, yeah, so let's try it on. I'm really excited to wear this. I was hoping I would have this done for my, the opening of my show, but I don't think it's going to happen. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Okay. Guys, thank you so much. Um, I love interacting with you and um, getting all those fun questions from you. So uh, ask away. It's super fun to talk about this stuff. And if you are inspired to do um, a garment like this, I would love to see what you're working on. I want to tell you before I go, I think I've decided what my next um, fabric painting project is going to be. 
So for my birthday, my hubby got me this art tote. Let me set this down. Because starting in March, I am going to be hosting Art Journal Jam at my local um, Museum of Art. We're going to get together once a month and do art journaling. And so I wanted something that I could really take, just have this be my journal bag. So journals, supplies, ready to go, grab it. Um, and it's got little pockets all around the outside and it's got a whole lot of room on the inside for my books and stuff. Um, I think I want to paint this too. Wouldn't that be so fun? It's a duck canvas, so it will hold paint quite a bit like the denim uh, jacket will. We'll see. I have plenty of other things I probably should be focusing on, but we'll see. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.